Throughout history, Israel has experienced exile, persecution, and a marked rejection of Jesus as the promised Messiah. This rejection has been interpreted by many as the end of an era. However, could it actually be the prelude to something much bigger and more momentous? What plans does God have for Israel according to Bible prophecy? Are we witnessing the end of Israel's history or the beginning of a promised glorious restoration? In this video, we will explore the depths of Scripture to discover Israel's future glory and the promises of her restoration. Before we begin, I want to thank you for following us and being part of our ministry. We are a Christian team dedicated to faithfully spreading the Word of God, and your support is vital to us. The best way to help us is to share this message with all your friends and family. This allows us to continue spreading the gospel and reach more people with the message of Christ. Let's get started. There is no other nation in history that has been the subject of as much biblical and theological study, debate, and controversy as the nation of Israel. What makes this people so unique and special is their divine designation. They were chosen by God to be the people through whom His plan and message would be revealed to all the nations of the world. Since its origins, Israel has occupied a central place in God's purposes, becoming the stage where some of the most significant events in biblical history took place. Through Israel, God showed His power, His covenant, and His will, which has provoked deep analysis and reflection in generations of believers and scholars of the Scriptures. Dear listener, the topic we wish to address on this occasion is the future restoration of Israel, a matter of great importance for both Judaism and Christianity. Much has been said about Israel being cast aside by God, yet the scriptures are filled with divine promises about the restoration of the Jewish people and their land. These prophecies have been interpreted in various ways throughout history. This study delves into the historical context of Israel, exploring biblical perspectives on its restoration contemporary theological interpretations, and the eschatological implications surrounding this topic. We will also examine the significant impact that the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948 had, and what this event represents on the current world stage. Now, to better understand the issue of the restoration of Israel and its implications, it is important to take a tour through the history of this people. From biblical times to the present, and understand how restoration has been seen in both physical terms, return to the land of Israel, and spiritual terms, relationship with God. Since the times of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Hebrews were a people marked by the divine promise that they would possess the land of Canaan. However, Israel's history has been marked by cycles of prosperity and crisis, exiles and restorations, often as a result of their fidelity or infidelity to the commandments of God established in the Law of Moses. These actions generated both positive and negative repercussions on their destiny. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, we find a clear exposition of the benefits of obedience and the consequences of disobedience for the people of Israel. A particularly significant verse is 64, which underlines the consequences of disobedience. Let us note what the biblical account says. And the Lord will scatter you among all peoples, from one end of the earth to the other, and there you will serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone. Now after the leadership of Moses and Joshua, the Israelites settled in the Promised Land. The unified kingdom of Israel reached its peak under the reigns of David and Solomon in the 10th and 9th centuries before Christ. But after Solomon's death, the kingdom was divided into two, the northern kingdom, Israel, and the southern kingdom, Judah. This division weakened both kingdoms, leading to foreign invasions. The northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians in 722 before Christ, and its people were exiled. Later. In 586 before Christ, the kingdom of Judah was destroyed by the Babylonians, who also destroyed the first temple in Jerusalem, driving the population into exile in Babylon. During this time, the promise of restoration lived on in the words of the prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, who declared that God would bring His people back to the promised land. 
Now, a crucial event in the history of Israel's restoration was the decree of Cyrus the Great, King of Persia, in 538 before Christ, allowing the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, which is known as the Second Temple. This marked a phase of physical restoration, although the people were still waiting for a full restoration of their kingdom and their relationship with God. Over the centuries, Jews experienced various diasporas, dispersions outside their homeland, especially after the destruction of the Second Temple by the Romans in 70 after Christ. This event marked the beginning of a long Jewish diaspora, lasting almost two millennia, during which Jews maintained a strong sense of identity and hope for a return to their ancestral homeland. Throughout this time, restoration was not only seen as a physical return, but also as the hope of a Messiah who would restore not only the land, but also the full relationship with God. Now, the concept of the restoration of Israel took a new direction with the rise of Zionism in the 19th century, a political and spiritual movement that advocated the return of Jews to the land of Israel. This culminated in the founding of the State of Israel in 1948, following the Balfour Declaration of 1917 and the devastating effects of the Holocaust during World War II. For many, the creation of the State of Israel was seen as a partial fulfillment of ancient prophecies of restoration. Throughout history, various doctrinal positions have emerged regarding the restoration of Israel, both in Judaism and Christianity. First of all, Judaism. For many Jews, restoration includes both the return to the land of Israel and the coming of the Messiah who will bring peace and the complete restoration of the people. The State of Israel, Although significant, is seen by some as a part of the process, but not as the full restoration that Scripture promises. Secondly, premillennial Christianity. Within some Christian groups, especially premillennialists, the return of the Jews to Israel and the formation of the State of Israel are seen as signs of the fulfillment of biblical prophecies about the end times. According to this view, the physical restoration of Israel is a sign that Christ's return is imminent and that Christ's millennial kingdom will be established in Jerusalem after his second coming. Thirdly, amillennial and postmillennial Christianity. Other Christian groups, such as amillennialists and postmillennialists, view the restoration of Israel more symbolically. For them, the promises of restoration and return to the land do not necessarily imply a physical return of the Jews to Israel, but are fulfilled in the church, which is seen as the new Israel. In this view, the promises made to Israel are spiritual and are fulfilled in Christ and in believers. Now, in both movements, the figure of the Messiah is fundamental to understanding the restoration. In Judaism, it is believed that the Messiah has not yet arrived and that his coming will inaugurate the complete restoration. In Christianity, Jesus is considered the Messiah who has already brought about a spiritual restoration. However, there are different opinions about whether there will be a future physical fulfillment related to Israel. According to biblical evidence and what we believe, Israel will be restored in the future, in literal fulfillment of the prophecies, not symbolically. God has not cast away Israel, he still has a plan for this people and will fulfill his eternal purpose with them. Today, the restoration of Israel remains a topic of theological debate. Within Judaism, there is a debate over whether the creation of the State of Israel is part of prophetic fulfillment or whether it should be viewed as a secular event. Some ultra-Orthodox Jews do not recognize the State of Israel because they believe that only the Messiah can bring true restoration. Now, there is something to detail. Israel's rejection of Jesus, although tragic, was part of the divine plan for the redemption not only of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles. This event opened the door for the gospel to spread beyond Israel and reach the entire world, thus fulfilling God's promise to bless all nations through the descendants of Abraham. Let us note some important points. First of all, Israel's rejection and prophetic fulfillment. When the Jews did not receive Jesus as their Messiah, the prophecies were fulfilled, not only in their rejection, but also in the subsequent mission of the gospel. The prophet Isaiah spoke of the Messiah being a light to the nations. In this context, Israel's rejection allowed the message of salvation to spread first to the Gentiles, as Paul mentioned in Romans chapter 11, verse 11, where he says, I say then, have those of Israel stumbled so that they should fall? 
God forbid, but through their transgression salvation came to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Israel's rejection does not mean the end of God's program for the nation. Not at all. In fact, this temporary rejection serves a key purpose within God's plan, as Paul explains in Romans chapter 11. Israel's unbelief allowed salvation to come to the Gentiles, but this does not imply that God has rejected his chosen people. Secondly, Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. Following the rejection of the gospel by many Jews, the apostle Paul, who originally preached to the Jews, was given a specific mandate to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Paul saw in this rejection a divine opportunity to fulfill God's plan of universal redemption, since now, not only the descendants of Abraham according to the flesh, but all those who believe in Christ, whether Jews or Gentiles, can be part of the people of God. Thirdly, the inclusion of Gentiles in the plan of salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul explains that through Christ's work on the cross, the Gentiles, who were previously far from the promises of God, have now been brought near by the blood of Christ. The wall that separated Jews and Gentiles was torn down, and both groups now form one body in Christ. This means that through the rejection of the Messiah by many in Israel, God used this event to offer salvation to all, regardless of their ethnic background. Fourthly, God's plan revealed. In Romans chapter 11, Paul delves into the mystery of how Israel's hardening is not permanent. He explains that his rejection allowed for the salvation of the Gentiles, but he also believes that in the end, Israel will be restored. God in his sovereignty has used Israel's rejection of the Messiah as a means to bring the gospel to the nations, and in due time, he will also bring Israel back to himself. Now, the prophecies of the Old Testament are fundamental to understanding the future restoration of Israel. Throughout the prophetic books, several promises that God made to his people are highlighted. Let us read the book of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. On that day, the Lord will extend his hand a second time to bring back the remnant of his people. Those who remain in Assyria and northern Egypt, in southern Egypt, Ethiopia and Elam, in Babylon, Hamath, and all the distant coastal lands. He will raise a banner among the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the dispersed people of Judah from the ends of the earth. This passage refers to a future return from all nations, where there will be a gathering of Jews who accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. The imagery of a remnant suggests that not everyone will be restored, but rather a select group who have remained faithful, which is crucial to understanding God's faithfulness to His promise. This re-establishment of Israel and Judah will occur in the last days, just before the establishment of the Messianic Kingdom. Furthermore, the prophet Ezekiel prophesied in chapter 37, verses 21 and 22, Give them this message from the Sovereign Lord. I will gather the people of Israel from among the nations. I will bring them back to their own land from the places where they have been scattered. I will unite them into one nation on the mountains of Israel. One king will rule over them all. They will no longer be divided into two nations or two kingdoms. This passage, which includes the famous vision of the dry bones, underscores that Israel's restoration is not only physical, but also spiritual. The revitalization of the nation implies an internal transformation, where the people will recognize their identity and their relationship with God. Another prophet who also spoke on this subject was Amos. Let's see what he says in chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. I will bring my people Israel from their captivity in distant lands. They will rebuild their ruined cities and live in them again. They will plant vineyards and orchards. They will eat their crops and drink their wine. I will plant them firmly there in their own land. They will never again be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Amos foretells a transformed and glorious land where God's people can constantly sow and reap at the same time. The land will be abundantly fertile, and God's blessings will never end.
the Israelites will return to the Lord and never again forsake him. They will feel secure in the land. Let us consider the prophet Zechariah in chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. The Lord of Heaven's army says, You can be sure that I will rescue my people from the east and the west. I will bring them home to live safely in Jerusalem. They will be my people, and as their God I will treat them with faithfulness and justice. This passage underscores the importance of Jerusalem as the center of restoration. The city is seen not only as a geographical location, but as the symbol of God's presence among His people. Now, let's look at the restoration of Israel in the New Testament. The references to the restoration of Israel in the New Testament offer a fresh perspective on the promises of the Old Testament, interpreted through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Let us read the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit upon the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This passage implies that the restoration of Israel is intrinsically related to the kingdom of God. The mention of the Twelve Thrones reflects the central role of the Apostles in the proclamation of the Gospel and their relationship with the tribes of Israel. Let us also read the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 6. Then those who had come together asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The disciples' question reveals their expectation of a political and territorial restoration. Jesus responds that the times are known to the Father, suggesting that Israel's restoration is part of a larger divine plan that encompasses both Jews and Gentiles. In Romans chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, the Apostle Paul says, For I do not want you, brothers, to be ignorant of this mystery, so that you may not be conceited in your own conceits, that a partial blindness has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and then all Israel will be saved as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion, he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Paul addresses Israel's future in the context of the plan of salvation, emphasizing that salvation is available to all but that the Jewish people have a special place in the divine plan. This hardening is temporary, suggesting a future restoration. The Apostle says, All Israel will be saved, referring to the body of believers in Israel. During the difficult times of tribulation, the number of Jews who will put their faith in Christ will increase considerably. This period will end when Christ frees these believers and defeats those who have not believed. All rebels and those who do not follow the path of faith will be condemned. The remnant of believing Jews who survive at the end of the world, together with the faithful of Israel of past generations, constitute what is called All Israel. Now, the restoration of Israel, according to biblical teaching, is intrinsically related to the recognition of Jesus as the Messiah, as expressed in Matthew chapter 23, verse 39, where Jesus states, for I tell you that from now on you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This passage suggests that the full restoration of Israel will not occur without its people accepting Jesus as their Savior. Furthermore, the process of restoration involves genuine repentance, which has been a recurring condition in Old Testament prophecies. Only by recognizing Jesus and repenting of their rejection of Him will Israel be able to experience the restoration promised by God. Let us read Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they will look upon me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and be in anguish for him as one in anguish for his firstborn. This verse anticipates a future repentance and recognition of Jewish identity, where Israel will turn to God. The connection between restoration and the recognition of Christ is fundamental in Christian theology. 
In Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, it tells us, And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 were sealed out of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The mention of the tribes of Israel in the context of the sealing emphasizes the importance of the Jewish people in the eschatological narrative. This passage suggests that the restoration of Israel is a key aspect in the fulfillment of God's redemptive plan. Finally, this process also includes an internal transformation symbolized in Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 and 27, where God promises the following. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall be careful to observe my judgments. This represents a profound spiritual change that will allow the people of Israel to be sensitive and obedient to the will of God, thus completing the cycle of their restoration. They will enter the millennium of Christ, a time of peace and restoration in which the Lord Jesus, in His divine authority, will bring about the restoration of all things. This period represents the fulfillment of His promises, where He will restore order and harmony to creation, healing the wounds of the world and bringing justice. The coming of this millennial kingdom will be a time of hope and renewal, in which the presence of Christ will transform the lives of His people and the environment around them. Thus, He will fulfill His word and accomplish all that He has promised. And so we come to the end of this video. Thank you for being part of our channel. God bless you abundantly. Until the next video.